The Alessandro Plain was little more than a sparse arid field of barley at the close of 1917. Yet, through the diligence of Riverside citizens, in just a few short months, it would become an Army aviation field. In early February 1918, a crew of enlisted men, led by an experienced Sergeant Charles E. Garlick, arrived from nearby Rockwell Field, San Diego. On the morning of March 1, 1918, the newly opened Alessandro Aviation Field met its first flyer, Aviation Cadet Harold Compre. In a rapid turn of events, only a month later, Alessandro Aviation Field was renamed March Field. On March 20, 1918, in honor of First Lieutenant Peyton C. March Jr., who had lost his life in a training accident five weeks earlier. On March 23, 1918, the War Department published the order officially establishing the installation. 11 November 1918, Armistice Day, and the end of World War I. Wartime training at March Field officially concluded on 14 December 1918. Demobilization of March Field occurred quickly thereafter. The 1930s marked the golden age of March Field. Hollywood celebrities, famous aviators, and military legends visited, trained at, and commanded the base. Some of the famous aviators that visited or called March Field home included General Henry Hap Arnold, Amelia Earhart, General Hoyt Vandenberg, General Nathan Twinning, General Howell Estes Jr., Captain Colin Kelly Jr., General Bernard Schriever, General Curtis LeMay, and General Carl Tui Spatz. During World War II, March Field served as a training installation for flyers heading overseas. Actor and comedian Bob Hope made multiple visits to March Field. In fact, Mr. Hope conducted what was considered the first USO show from the base gymnasium on May 6, 1941. March Field was also one of the first Army Air Force's installations to receive Women's Army Service Pilots, or WASPs. In early 1967, March Air Force Base's bomber, tanker, and numerous support assets deployed to various strategic air command units involved in the direct combat operations in Southeast Asia. The Air Force Regional Hospital at March was chosen as one of the facilities to welcome and care for returning POWs. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, March field units and personnel participated in various operations. From Operation Urgent Fury on the island of Grenada, from the sands of the Middle East to Operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm, to Operation Restore Hope in Somalia, Team March would deploy troops, provide aerial refueling, and transport massive amounts of cargo and personnel. Over the years, Team March has also provided relief when natural disasters struck. From resupplying Hopi and Navajo Native American communities in January of 1932 to Hurricane Sandy in 2012. The story of American military aviation does not limit itself to any one branch of service. Rather, it is a cumulative effort of soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen in the air, on land, and on the sea, answering their nation's call from the skies above to the trenches, the mud, and the sand and from the echoes of ships at sea. From every clime and place, brothers and sisters in arms were creating a legacy of valor and distinction that would carry well into the future. The story of March Field is their story, our story, America's story.